the session i am going to talk about co integration what does it mean with respect to the time series analysis and uh, as an application of the co integration i am going to take up a financial application which is cross hedging where i have to do a hedging of the risk associated with one financial instrument using another probably the futures of some other kind of a security definition wise i am not going in depth in this uh, in this session because here the context is how do i really use r for all these kind of purposes first thing when i talk about co integration the major intention is i want to get to a linear combination right my intention is to create a linear combination between a non stationary kind of a time series for a non stationary time series right this that, that particular time series whose mean variance and other statistical properties are not constant i want to have some kind of a linear combination of this particular non stationary time series wherein i can really convert it into a stationary time series that is where i am using the concept of co integration so my objective is to convert a non stationary time series into a stationary one so because of that reason once i am able to do that i would be able to detect long run relationships between the variables that is where i'll take the example of cross hedging we can take the long run relationship between the two non stationary time series data if i have a non series times non stationary time series data 1 and non stationary time series data 2 i should be able to identify the long run relationship between these two data point now for that i want to really take an example associated with cross hedging and the way i want to handle this example is i have taken a data set which contains the data relating to sensex mid cap index the data for this is collected from somewhere 2003 april to 2016 march so almost uh, 14 years of data has been collected 13 14 years of data has been collected and uh, this particular uh, the, this is the kind of a, so my my portfolio what i want to really look at is my portfolio is more or less mimicking this particular index so my portfolio is uh, moving more or less in the same lines as this particular index so i really want to hedge this right because there is a lot of uh, volatility in the mid cap index possibly so i really want to hedge if not fully at least a part of my total exposure to this changing mid cap prices so this is where i want to look at probably the futures market or for that matter any other market with which uh, or first let me look at the futures market let's assume that the mid cap futures is not available on the market and there is no otc derivatives contracts that are traded with respect to the sensex mid cap so directly i don't have any kind of instruments so i am trying to look at something relatively traded kind of a contract and uh, for that for that time being 
let's say I have narrowed down on using the sensex to hedge this particular exposure. So mid cap exposure, I wanted to hedge through the sensex. So I really want to find out what is the optimal hedge ratio, which means how many units of sensex do I really need to go short on or long on if at all I want to hedge one single unit of the mid cap futures. So this is what I am calling as the optimal hedge ratio. So this optimal hedge ratio initially we will look at a classical approach. So when I am saying classical approach, I will look at short term fluctuation. My focus is on short term fluctuations of both the mid cap prices and the sensex prices. The item that I am going to hedge and the asset with which I am going to hedge my asset. So the, the asset to be hedged and the asset with which I am going to hedge. So both the things I look at the short term fluctuations of the prices between both of them. So that is the first approach, which is what we are calling as the classical approach. And after that, we can also look at the long run stable relationship between both the prices so that we can improve the hedge ratio. So this is what is a two step process as a part of the hedging process. Initially, we are looking at a short term, uh, how the short term prices are fluctuating, differences in the prices. Then we are looking at long term stable relationship between both the prices. Now, let's try to look at that particular aspect using R. Here, for doing this activity, I want to use one package which is built in as a part of R, which is called as ARCA package. So basically, this is having lots and lots of functions especially to do with the co-integration wherever I would like to use co-integration wherein I am looking at two different time series which are non-stationary kind of nature. So that is where co-integration comes into picture and wherever I want to use the co-integration as a concept, it's better that I rely on the ARCA package. So I'll try to install the ARCA package as well along with the zoo package. So I think uh, R is already in, uh, uh, opened here. So let me install the package. I'll install the package named Arca. U-R-C-A. Alright, I'm installing this particular package called Arca. Yes. Okay, this particular package is installed. So I'll load both library. I'll load both the zoo package, which has already been installed earlier, and I'll also be loading Arca package now. I've already uh, installed it, so we are loading even the Arca package. So both these things are being loaded. Now we need to get the price data. For that, I have maintained it in an Excel sheet. I have the mid cap data right from 2003 April till 2016 March. Similarly, I want to hedge that using the Sensex. So, if uh, actually I should hedge it using Sensex futures, but yeah, as an assumption, let's take these are the Sensex futures itself. Right? In reality, they are uh, the Sensex values. But for our understanding purpose or for the way of, for the purpose of using this in R, let's call this column as the Sensex Futures itself. So this is the kind of a data. So my portfolio is more or less replicating this. I want to hedge the risk of this particular portfolio using these particular futures. So that is how I want to look at my problem. So let me uh, bring this 
data into R. So for this, I will call some prices or some uh, index values. Right? Let me call it 